Hello everyone, my name is Julian. I'm in charge of uh, sales and customer success at Prospect.io. Uh, and today's presentation is going to be about sharing some very practical tips on how to build a, a sales machine for your startup. So, um, who is this presentation for actually? Uh, mainly, it's, it's addressed to founders of early stage uh, startups who want to, to sell B2B products and they're thinking about starting a sales team. Um, companies who already have some traction on the market but they want to build a scalable sales process. And then of course um, companies who are maybe successful with doing inbound uh, sales and they want to explore outbound sales as a, as a way to generate more uh, predictable revenue. So I hope this will be interesting for you guys and yeah, let's see some of the stuff we're, we're going to cover today. Um, so first off we'll start by you know, just clarifying a question. Do we still really need a sales team um, in tech startups, right? Is it still relevant? Can you just do marketing and have leads come to you and just sign up directly on a website? Um, then what is the right sales strategy and the right sales process for your startup? Uh, should you focus on inbound first, then move to outbound? Should you do both at the same time? And then how do you practically get started, right? What are the steps you need to take to really to really build the sales process and, and start to generate revenue. And the, th the last topic would be about tools, right? So apps you could use, a workflow, a playbook that you could uh, combine with technology in order to, to get started. So the first, uh, the first part is, uh, do we really need sales in, in tech companies, right? Um, and we're asking this question because, you know, I'm, I'm talking to a lot of uh, startup founders, mostly early stage, and there's a lot of people who dream of creating this self-service SaaS, right? So you, you want to create a product that doesn't require a lot of human interaction in order to convince uh, your website visitors to sign up. And that's a great, that's a great idea and it's a great strategy. Uh, but then of course, you know, the short answer is yes, we still need sales teams. Um, the right answer is it really depends. If you do want to build a self-service startup, you can do it, but then Maybe here are a couple of questions that can guide you and really see if uh, what's the right approach, right? So what matters is, do you have super high ambitions? Do you want to create a global product and you want to have, you know, sell it from, uh, from here in Belgium, but also in France, in the UK, in Germany, you want to move to Australia or to the United States? It depends, right? Because if you do want to have a global presence, um, it will also require, you know, catering to different markets. Um, are you selling a complex solution? with lots of features, does it require someone to do the onboarding for the customer or not? Um, do you also aim to get sales from corporate customers or from large enterprises? Because you know the sales process will be different, uh, evidently. Um, do you perhaps just sell to SMEs or to, to individual consumers? And then one other thing that you should also keep in mind when you decide, okay, do I need the sales teams or not? is what's your average deal size, right? What sort of a, a pricing strategy do you have in mind? Um, are you talking about low value sales? Let's say it's a $10 subscription per month or is it 100? Or you're selling annual plans which can be, I don't know, $5,000 a month or sorry, a year. Um, so these are some of the things you need to consider. And uh, it really depends on your, on your situation, on your strategy, and of course your product. Um, but the main point I want to make here is you have to think about this early on. So the sooner you can, uh, you can figure out who your market is, who you're serving, um, that's going to help you a lot, not only just in terms of you know, deciding whether you need to, to really hire people for sales, but also in terms of product development, making sure that you, you create the right product for, for the right market, your positioning on the market um, in terms of you know, competition, what you stand for, Pricing as well, if you go for monthly or for yearly plans, uh, do you sell one-off solutions and you sell services maybe? And of course, it all gets down to, to your sales strategy. So the second part the, um, that I'm going to discuss here is what is the right sales strategy for, uh, for your startup, right? So then there's a couple of things um, that you might want to you know, go into deeper. There's a really good book called Predictable Revenue. It's been written by, by uh, Aaron Ross. And a lot, of, uh, a lot of startup founders say it's the sales bible in, in Silicon Valley. So yeah, do have a look. Uh, I'm going to use just one, uh, one sort of a metaphor from the book, uh, explaining how you can generate revenue for your company, right? So what you see on the screen is uh, basically 
three general uh, methods, let's say, three approaches. So we're going to talk about seeds, nets, and, uh, and spears. So to clarify a bit what each of these uh, terms uh, refers to, seeds are basically leads that come from uh, word of mouth marketing. Maybe you, know, you have a, already a network, you've been uh, joining tech events or startup events here in, in, uh, in Liège or somewhere else in, in, uh, in Belgium, in Europe. Uh, you already have people you could uh, talk to about your idea to get feedback, to get them to really sign up early. So Seeds is basically your network, your existing network. And then of course, the, the business that comes from customer referrals. If you already have 100 users and you make a great job to really push the product, explain the value, help them improve the product, they will probably refer you to, to their friends, right? Or to their professional network. Um, so seeds is super important, yeah. Then we have nets, and this is uh, this is quite popular, you know, when it comes to inbound marketing. And there's HubSpot that created an entire entire uh, let's say wave of of uh, methodologies of tactics you can use for inbound marketing, ranging from uh, SEO to social media to content marketing, or even webinars. So this essentially refers to what do you do as a company in order to attract people, right? To have them come to you, you don't go and chase them. So you, you make sure you have a great website, you optimize it from a SEO perspective, um, you start a blog and you share valuable lessons uh, that you've learned from your customers or you educate your potential, uh, potential customers. And all of this, of course, it's also a, a lead generation technique and it's working great for a lot of companies. And then the last option uh, would be using spears, right? So. Um, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar, I'm going to explain just what it means, you know, visually also. It's, it's a weapon that's been used uh, in medieval times, I guess. But the, the metaphor is you need to have a high precision uh, tool that makes you be proactive in the market, right? So you don't wait for leads to come to you. You use spears to target specific companies, specific accounts, as we call them in sales. And then you try to contact them and position your, your product or your service. And this is mostly defined as, you know, outbound marketing or outbound sales, right? So then um, we have these three options, generally speaking, of course. And I bet most of the activities you can do from a marketing perspective or a sales perspective can be tied to one of these three uh, strategies. Now the question is, what's the best source to generate leads, right? And as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, um, my talk here is about helping early, ch early stage uh, startups, right? So let's say you you've have an idea, you already started working on a product, maybe you have an MVP, you have a prototype, and then you want to get your first customers, right? How do you start? Where do you, where do you take it? So um, some pros and cons for each one of these, uh, these strategies, right? First off, when it comes to, to, to seeds, it's typically how startup founders get their first customers, right? You reach out to friends, you reach out to a coach that you've met at a startup event, you ask for feedback, and then, of course, you, you invite people to try your product. It usually happens for free, right? It's a, it's a free trial kind of thing. Uh, and then, of course, another thing which is very useful, um, if you're a startup founder, if you're a CEO a CDO, it doesn't matter your position in the company in the beginning, you need to, to develop a personal brand, right? And I know it sounds a bit fancy, but it essentially refers about having, you know, a known identity, creating awareness about what you do and what your company does. And you need to, to put some effort into it, and it pays off, really. Then, in terms of, you know, uh, downsides of, of seeds, it does th it take some time to, to really convince people, right, to, to turn from a seed into a customer from someone you just invite for a free trial, just to get some feedback, just to get some, uh, some inputs, and then convince them to pay. It's not super easy, but of course it's, it's doable. Um, and then the biggest problem with seeds is that you have a limited number of them, right? There's not, I mean, of course, maybe you're, you're already having a great personal brand and you have thousands of people in your network, but if you have a thousand connections on LinkedIn, that doesn't mean you have a thousand seeds. Um, the seeds should be someone you can easily reach out to and say, hey, I worked on this product. I think it would be a cool thing for you to try. Let's give it a shot. Uh, but the issue is it's not that scalable. You can't really uh, repeat this process over and over again to generate a good pipeline of deals. Um, then what about nets, right? So uh, 
this really comes from, from, the fishing, uh, from the fishing industry. You really cast the net to, to attract people. And one of the most effective strategies is content marketing, right? Because you build awareness. Um, of course, probably your articles on your blog will be optimized for specific keywords, and you want to push that maybe with Facebook ads. You share it with all, all your uh, colleagues in your team. Um, and it works, right? It, it, it really works. SEO pays off. Um, it, it might take a bit of time, but it, it, it's, it's a really good strategy. And if you think of companies like Intercom, for instance, they've built a, a multi-million uh, uh, dollar a year. Uh, I think it's almost 60 million uh, revenue per year right now, just based on, on inbound marketing, right? And inbound sales. Um, and a cool feature here is that what you do today, so if you write a great article today and you solve a problem of a potential customer, it can really bring leads even, you know, two, three years from now. Um, then, you know, the shortcomings of, 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 of nets, of marketing nets, it takes time, right? It's not something that you can do today and it will generate uh, 10 leads tomorrow. Absolutely not. So you need to be realistic about the, the efforts that are needed. Um, and then it takes time to experiment, right? Um, you, you need to figure out what works for you. You need to uh, run different uh, experiments. You can try maybe if you're good at writing or you enjoy it, you can try content marketing. If you already have some SEO experience, you can really make sure that you optimize your website. Maybe you're passionate about social media. Maybe you like to organize webinars. There's a wide range of things you can do, but it all takes uh, time to do that and to really you know, test see what works and then replicate. Um, then the, the thing is with when you have a big net that you, you just put in the water and you, you expect to, to catch something, it does generate an, a high number of leads, but the issue is you're going to get a lot of traffic on your website that is not qualified, right? It's not going to be the exact customers you need for, for your business. Um, maybe some people just found an interesting article, but then they go on your website, they see your product and say, okay, there's not a real big connection between what you, you wrote in the article and th their, their biggest problems or how your, pro how your product solves that. Um, so it takes a bit of effort because you need to somehow qualify these, uh, these leads coming to your website. And then the last point here is it's really not predictable in terms of revenue that you generate, right? You, might have a thousand visitors this month, two thousand next month. Maybe it's only five hundred next month, right? If you if you go <laughs> into a into a I don't know some some issues with Google, but it's really not predictable. That's the general idea. You can't forecast it. You can't make a business plan with it. Then uh, the spears, you know, just a, a a little image so you get a very good understanding of what I mean with that. They're really opposite of nets. Uh, they generate a small number of leads, but they're highly qualified. And you know, in terms in, in terms of sales, we define qualified as someone who uh, is aware of your product. They want it, they need it, and they're in a capacity to buy it. Right? They, they're the decision makers. So these are all key factors if you want to close a deal. And the real cool thing with the using spears, like going after accounts, chasing them actively, um, is that you can build. A scalable sales process, right? You can uh, figure out how many companies uh, there are in Belgium that could use your product. You can also scale that and say, okay, I'm going to sell my services to the same type of customers in France, in the Netherlands, in the UK, so on and so forth. So it, it's predictable um, because you'll see that when you do sales, uh, at some point you, you get to, to understand your metrics. You get to understand that if you send, uh, you know, if you contact 100 people, you're probably going to get 10 meetings, and out of 10 meetings, you're probably going to get uh, three qualified leads, and out of three qualified leads, maybe you get two, two deals that you close, right? And then with time, in a couple of months, you basically are able to create a very predictable sales pipeline. All right, now um, it's not all you know, positive stuff when it comes to using Spears, so let's see some of the, the shortcomings, right? First off, it really takes a lot of time to iterate and to find the right attack uh, angle, right? The right strategy, basically, the right sales playbook, as we call it. Um, because you need to figure out a lot of stuff like, okay, should I do cold calling? Do I need to pick up the phone and really call people from that specific company? Do I send them an email? Do I contact them on LinkedIn? What do I say when I, when I approach them, right? So all of this stuff, it's not something you can do in, in, in one week. It takes, it takes a couple of, uh, of weeks or maybe a couple of months to really find the right solution here. 
Um, and secondly, it is costly. I mean, if you do want to do it right, um, it does involve building a team of specialized uh, sales reps. Uh, of course, every startup uh, maybe you know, just hires one person in the beginning, and that person is a jack of all trades. He will do some prospecting of the market. He will bid lists of, of companies to approach. Then he will you know, try to get them to do some demos or to have some calls, uh, try to close the deal. He's also going to act probably as a customer success, like an account manager who makes sure that they get a lot of value from their product. Um, but on the long run, uh, keep in mind that you need to, to build a team with specialized sales roles because that's when you really scale up the process. When you have people who do three things uh, in a day, it's not going to be as effective as someone who's really focusing and you know, uh, t learning all the lessons, uh, acquiring experience, making mistakes, iterating the process. So, Typically, the most successful startups that we know who have uh, these type of, you know, very good growth in terms of sales, they have specialized sales roles. Um, so, okay, um, I'm, I'm going to leave you with a question then. What is the right strategy for, for your startup? Um, actually, it depends, right? It depends and it's not always easy to, to figure out in the beginning, but we are going to talk about it more uh, at the live workshop we do in May, right? Um, just as a, just as a you know, let's say, a general idea you could use on how do you practically get started with, uh, with sales for your startup, um, the usual approach is start with seeds, right? Pick the low-hanging fruits, as they say. So start with people in your network, people in your city. If you're going to an accelerator, if you're uh, you know, having lots of friends in different other startups, reach out to them, invite them to, to test your product. Um, these are going to be your first customers, actually. Uh, maybe customers is not the right word because they're probably not going to pay for it, but they're going to be your first user. It's, it's super valuable. They will help you improve your product and, and really get to, to market fit. Now, usually what's also uh, important after you get your first uh, customers, you need to start casting nets, right? So you need to push some, uh, some market experiments. Uh, make sure your website is really well optimized, make sure that you start uh, putting relevant content there, start a webinar, you know, there's a lot of resources online on, on uh, growth hacking, uh, there's a lot of very good companies here in, in Belgium as well who do it and who can advise you, and yeah, you just need to try it at the end of the day, so start as early as possible to really um, place some, uh, some market strategies on the market. And then, of course, this will also uh, uh, bring you more customers, hopefully. And when you have a, a steady customer base, you have at least, let's say, 100 companies who, who joined your product. Uh, a lot of them, maybe they already start paying. Uh, this will really help you to discover and fine-tune your ideal customer profile. So if you see that you're attracting 100 companies and then, I don't know, 20 of them are working in... Um, uh, let's say digital services. Another 15 are based in the UK and they sell, a, I don't know, an SEO solution. It really depends on what you guys are selling. But you're going to notice that people come from different companies, from different types of industries, different countries. And then at the end of the day, when you talk to these people, you'll figure out, okay, who do I really want to serve? What's the best fit? Where can I provide most value? And of course, which are the companies which are willing to pay for, uh, for our stuff, right? Um, and after you have an ICP, that's when I really advise you to, to start developing this, uh, this Spears strategy, right? To really do outbound sales, hire your first salesperson, and really uh, define your sales process. Take this as, you know, general idea. You can, it's, it's a flexible thing. You can decide what's, what's best for you. And we can also have some uh, really, um, I think, you know, applied talks based on your examples on, on your specific products. Then um, the last part, right, is so far we, we kind of covered, okay, uh, what do I want to do? Like what strategy do I want to use? Um, I'm already starting with some things. How do, how do I get started? What tools to use? And what's, what's really important is to understand if you're thinking about sales, what's the current, uh, the current life of a sales team, right? So these are some of the things a salesperson needs to do on a daily basis, right? You need to find prospects, you need to get their emails or phone numbers, you need to call them or send personalized emails asking for a demo or pushing some case studies. Um, and yeah, all of this stuff takes time, huh? All of this stuff is like uh, something that consumes about 80% of a salesperson's uh, person day. 
Now, unfortunately, if you look at the typical way of doing sales, you only spend about 20% on stuff like having conversation with prospects, like really talking to people and discovering their needs, you know, going into a consultative sales process, uh, showing value, explaining what your product does, but not in terms of features, but needs that you can actually cover for them, offer them solutions, and of course, closing deals. So that's the current, uh, the current split that, that we see. And I've also been doing sales for about, you know, nine or almost 10 years right now. And uh, there was some technology that we could use in the past, but now I see in the past couple of years, let's say four to five years, this has really, has really improved. And you have lots of options that can make your life easier if you want to start with, the, with sales. So then I typically, I typically define them as low added value activities, right? The stuff that you see on your left side, what you normally spend 80% of your time on and then high, value, high added value uh, activities, right? So the consequences typically when you used to do sales this way, like you, you are spreading your efforts into finding prospects, contacting them, following up, closing deals, all of this stuff, it's, it's, it's really not a good thing in terms of results. And uh, first off, you're wasting time because you're not specialized on something, you're dividing your time every day and there's lots of interruptions. Um, if, if you're sending emails and you're copy pasting stuff from one email to another, you also risk to, to get blacklisted, to be marked as spam because you're not really personalizing your, your content. Uh, if you send manual emails again, right, or if you, if you make uh, calls, it's a bit hard to really track and understand, okay, is this campaign successful? Is, is it really bringing results? And then at the end of the day, we're just talking about, you know, um, missed revenue targets, missed opportunities. So this is for the classic approach, right? Now, the good news is, as I mentioned before, there are new ways of, of doing this and there are new products, new apps that can really help you um, really scale this process, make it more efficient, make it more, more specialized. So the idea is to use technology to streamline uh, and to scale your sales process. And imagine if you could just reverse this, uh, this entire story. So instead of spending 80% of your time on this stuff, you just spend 20% doing that and you focus most of your time in really talking to customers, right? That's what you want to do. You want to, to talk to prospects and to convince them about your value. Um, so what I'm going to present now in just a couple of minutes is um, some, some, let's say, major steps of what you can do in terms of a process, like to, to really get started with sales. But then, of course, uh, there's not going to be a lot of time today, so we'll cover much more when we have the live work workshop on, uh, in, in May. Sorry, um, And then, of course, we'll do some more concrete examples because uh, it's, it's one thing to have a general uh, sales talk and understand the process, but then I would really like to get into tactics with you. I would like to, to understand what you're selling, who you're selling to, and give you some tips about, okay, tools you can use, but also tactics. Okay, what do you say in the emails? Uh, what channels do you approach? How do you use LinkedIn? All that. So the first thing you need to do in order to get started to build a scalable sales process is to find um, a constant stream of new prospects, of new leads for, uh, for your product, right? So you don't just want to find 10 people today that you can talk to and then for the next week you're going to go out of, uh, out of leads. You want a constant stream of, of people to approach. Um, so there's basically Two things we can also help you with directly at, at Prospect.io. And uh, one thing is showing you how to use a Chrome extension, which really makes it super simple for you to discover new prospects, quickly add them to a list so you can contact them. And then we also have a solution for, uh, for LinkedIn. And LinkedIn, it's a, it's a super powerful tool and social selling is on the rise. But of course, you still need to automate this process because you have about 530 million uh, users on LinkedIn. Right? So that's a huge addressable market. It's typically people who have jobs, who work in, in specific companies. You could have you know, a huge market that you could approach depending on what you're selling, but then it's super hard to, to really scale that process. So I'm gonna show you during the li uh, live workshop how to do it, how to use technology to, to do these two things. Okay, so the first step was finding prospects, building lists uh, of, of leads that you can contact. Now, the second step is doing the outreach, right? Reaching out and trying to, to get a, a call, a meeting with that person and explain and position your product. So then, in the past, we used to do this um, a, a bit 
let's say, in a traditional way with cold calling, right? And back when I started my, my sales career, I think it was 2007, you just got a list of companies, their phone numbers, and you had to dial in because people were not really um, you know, responding that much to, to emails. There was not this, this uh, wave of new technology and people always being connected with smartphones, right? I think the iPhone was just being launched. So um, that was the old way. Cold calling is still something that you can do. It, it might be a viable strategy, but just keep in mind that it's, it's super aggressive. And especially in Europe, people don't like to receive calls from random people asking you if you need a new car, if you need a new insurance, if you want to buy a SaaS product to optimize your whatever. So what we normally suggest is start using emails because you know, it's, it's still a cold way of contacting someone, but then it's less aggressive and people react better to it. And especially if you, if you use that in conjunction with LinkedIn. So uh, I'm gonna show you some things about how to use a drip campaign and how to scale up this process. Instead of spending a lot of time manually writing uh, to emails to people. Maybe you could do 10 emails, 20 emails in a day, which are fully personalized. There are tools on the market, and Prospect.io is one of them, that can help you create a drip campaign, right? So it's essentially a sequence that does automatically uh, follow it up with, the, with your prospects. So you still have personalized email, but those emails are sent automatically, and we detect if people open it, if they click on a link. And the power of this is that you can just add 100 prospects to a campaign like that, and the tool does the job for you. It makes sure it follows up with relevant messages, and once they have a reply, you basically stop the automated sequence, you get the reply in your inbox, and you have a lead you can continue talking to, right? Um, so then, about cold emailing, there's a lot of stuff that we're, we're gonna cover, but I think it's gonna be mostly during the live workshop. There's a lot of you know, myths, okay, is it working? Will it still be allowed after GDPR comes into action? Uh, if I automate it, will it reduce personalization? You know, we're gonna cover some of these stuff uh, and make sure we clarify everything and show you how to do cold emailing the right way. So then, um, some things about the benefits of drip campaigns. I'm also not gonna go into detail now. We're, we're gonna talk about it more, but uh, essentially, Automating this part of the process gives you more time to really handle uh, sales conversations. So then, step three of the process, after you, you, have, uh, you have started a drip campaign, you have your first contact with someone and you get a reply, what you wanna do, of course, is to uh, review those replies and, and track performance, right? And there's a couple of very important metrics that you can use. How many people open your emails? What's your click rate? Right? if you push people to visit your website, what's your reply rate and your conversion rate. And these are some of the most important ones, but then if you use drip campaigns, you also need to keep a look on, uh, on the bounce rate because that tells you, okay, uh, do I have any deliverability issues? Uh, are my messages relevant uh, to people or do they mark me as, as spam? And of course, we don't want that. Um, so we're gonna talk about it more in, in detail. The most important one from my perspective is the reply rate. Uh, you might be tempted to say, okay, the conversion rate is, is the critical one, but what you need, need to focus on is getting people to firstly to reply to your emails. Even if it's a negative reply, someone saying, hey, I'm not interested, or I'm not the right person, you can still do something about it, right? There are sales techniques where you can turn people around, you can ask for a referral for another person who's in charge, and a reply is, is super valuable. And if you don't get replies, you're never gonna get to, to real conversions. So then a couple, of, a couple more things and we're getting close to, to the, the end of this presentation. If you do want to automate this process, we have a, a couple of things we can offer you. So in terms of improving sales productivity and focusing on conversations, you can use a, a tool like Drip Campaigns for, from Prospect.io. And then you also get some benefits when you avoid technical, uh, technical aspects, right? You don't have to bother about setting up the right server connection, making sure stuff is secure, making sure that you don't get marked as spam. So we take care of all of that stuff for you. Um, so basically, if you do wanna get started, you know, even, uh, even while you're watching this, uh, this video and you say, okay, that was interesting information, let's do something about it. Um, I have a proposal for you. So there's a, small, uh, there's a small discount that you can already use before we start the, the workshop. 
So you can have 25% off for the first three months if you want to use Prospect.io, right? You have the information here in the, in the slide. And uh, during the workshop, we're definitely going to cover a lot of that uh, more. Uh, and this final, the final step when it comes to your sales process is making sure that you use a CRM tool to track your pipelines, uh, to see how you're performing at every stage of your sales process. And, and what's your closing rate, right? Like, what's your win rate? Um, and on this slide, I just presented a couple of, of uh, tools which would uh, form an ideal sales stack. But that's just my perspective, right? There's many more other solutions on the market. I'm just giving you uh, some which I'm familiar with, uh, which I know that work for, uh, for our customers. So in terms of lead gen, finding leads, you can use Prospect.io, you can use LinkedIn, other you know, database sources like data.com or ZoomInfo or uh, whatever. Then in terms of sales prospecting, of course, I'm from Prospect.io, so you really need to try our solution. And then um, I'm also recommending some pipeline management tools, and I'll explain what are the differences, uh, what should you use depending on your current, uh, current position. So I definitely recommend Pipedrive. There's also HubSpot CRM, which is a good solution, Insightly, and of course, uh, Salesforce, the market leader. And then task, uh, task automation. So I'll explain how to even eliminate all, a lot of the manual copy pasting, syncing to CRMs, all of that stuff using Zapier and, and PySync. And by the way, PySync is also a, a Belgian startup from, uh, from Ghent. And then in terms of customer success, and we're not going to talk a lot about that, but it's super important, especially for the SaaS uh, companies. Uh, there are some, some options here which are quite interesting, like Natero, Sales Machine, or Plan Hat. So we're definitely going to talk about it more. Now, um, that's pretty much what I wanted to, to give you as a, as a quick tour you know, of, of what's going to happen during the workshop. Um, just, just keep in mind that on, on May 3rd, we are going to talk more about your challenges. right? So I, I really want to understand your contacts and see how we can, uh, we can help and what type of uh, sales process is really a good fit for you. Then I'm also going to share good practices and, um, and tactics that I've been you know, using or developing or learning from our customers in terms of doing cold emails and using drip campaigns. And then, of course, you're also going to end up with some, uh, some templates. So if you want to get started right away, you will have some cold email templates uh, ready to use. Okay? So thanks a lot for the time. If you have any questions in the meantime, I'm just one email away. So hope to see you on May 3rd.